All right, welcome everyone. We are outside of Rojo's outside enclosure here. Um, I've got Keeper Eric on the phone and uh, Keeper Rose is outside with me and I'm Keeper Grace. Um, so we're gonna talk about Rojo today. So shout out if you've got any questions about Rojo, we can answer your questions. Otherwise, we're just gonna tell you a little bit about him and Sumatran Tigers in the Wilds today. Um, so, so Rojo is, uh, like I said, a Sumatran Tiger. Uh, Sumatran tigers are the smallest of the tiger species. They are found in the Indonesian islands around Sumatra. And Rojo here is 13 years old, so he is a little bit of an older cat. He would be nearing the end of his lifespan were he living in the wild. But because he lives in captivity, he can live, live well into his late teens, even his early 20s. Uh, because he doesn't have to worry about disease, he's got a meal. Um, he doesn't have to worry about where his meals are coming from. We're going to wait for this motorcycle to go by. <laughs> it's like music enrichment. <laughs> um, so let me know if I have to talk louder. We are talking through masks because tigers are one of our COVID susceptible animals. So we are taking extra precautions around all of our cat species. Um, so we are wearing our mats to help protect him. <laughs> we did bring out some extra enrichment for him. We gave him some paper towel tubes with like meat and perfume and stinky things. Um, but he looks mighty comfy. Yeah, here's kind of an ironic question from Isaac. He's four. He wants to know how fast tigers can run. <laughs> we made sure to look this up before we came just in case you asked, Isaac. Um, so I don't know that I've ever seen Rojo run this fast, um, <laughs> but we looked it up and they said that t Sumatran tigers can run about 40 miles per hour. Now tigers are ambush hunters. Um, so that means that they're going to like stalk their prey. Um, so he's not going to do that for a long period of time. He's going to run like that in short bursts. As you can see, Rojo, he does not exert much energy unless he absolutely needs to. Hold on. Is Jeanette still here? No. Oh, Jeanette took out. All right, Jeanette's mom is watching. She <laughs> wants to know. Jeanette, your mom's watching. Come say hi to your mom. Her mom she says hi, mom. She says hi, mom. <laughs> hi, mom. Um, Heather's mom, or uh, Jeanette's mom wants to know if they like to swim. If they like to swim, yes. Tigers do like to swim. We do have um, a small pool up there for him in the rock work. They are one of the, the cat species that do like to swim. They are found in those warmer temperatures, um, so they will cool off in the water. Uh, Laura wants to know if he will ever have a mate. That's a great question. So Rojo moved here two years ago? Two years ago. Two yep. years ago um, from Topeka Zoo in Kansas, and he did have a mate there. They're a larger zoo. They have a facility where they can um, house more tigers than we can. Um, and so he did have a female there. He had three litters at Topeka Zoo. And then he moved to Miller Park here. Um, because we are a smaller facility, we will only have a single male. They are a solitary species, which means that he always will live by himself. In the wild, he would live by himself as well. Um, if you see more than one tiger in an enclosure together, it is most likely a sibling pair or a mom with her offspring, with her cubs. Um, so being a smaller facility, we, we will always have a, a single male. So, uh, because he had several litters at Topeka, he's, he's what we call a bachelor tiger now. Um, and so we didn't, we don't want his genetics to become overrepresented in the captive Sumatran population. Um, so he's just living the bachelor life now. So Mandy has a question that kind of goes along with that. Uh, will he ever get a bigger enclosure? That is a great question. Um, so it is in our big master plan to build a, uh, a much updated, larger tiger exhibit. Um, so yeah, donate to the zoo and that we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking probably at a $5 million project. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a lot of money. Um, and we're always fundraising. So if you have $5 million, let us know and we right. can put it to good use. 
Even if you don't have five million dollars, <laughs> we can still put it towards we'll, that. We'll take any amount. We can take any amount towards below that, that or above that. Right. If you have more than five million dollars, then we, we can make an even cooler exhibit. We'll find something to do with it. We promise. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amanda wants to know what does he eat and how often. So here in the zoo, he does get um, a certain. We weigh out his meat every single day. Um, six days of week, he gets what six seven eight pounds of meat a day it is specially uh, it's meat specially formulated for big cats like him um it is mostly horse meat it's healthiest for him um kip comes in big five pound tubes and it looks kind of like ground beef but it's got like ground bone and cartilage chunks that are good for his digestive system and stuff and then uh one day a week we do have what we call a fast day or a bone day so um, on that day, he does not get all eight pounds of meat. He gets those uh, like two pounds of meat in the morning. And then in the evening, he gets a bone. Now he's strong enough that he eats the entire bone. Um, the snow leopards are on the same schedule and they just eat like the marrow out of the bone. Um, but he is strong enough that he just eats that whole bone up. And that is to kind of emulate how he would eat in the wild. Um, so in the wild, he would make a kill and then gorge himself so he would make, eat that large animal and then he may not eat for several days and so it is healthier for his digestive system to have that fast day uh, let's see we're getting a ton of questions so i'm just trying to scroll back uh, sue wants to know what makes him roar the food or uh like guests roaring at him what makes him roar i don't think he reacts to guests roaring at him i think the time of day He's got a wicked internal clock and he knows when it is supper time. And that's when I think I hear him roaring the most. Definitely in the afternoon, he just seems to be more talkative. Yeah. Yeah, but Lisa asked, um, is he laid back because of the heat this time of day? No, this is him no, all that's the just, time. Yeah, that's just his personality. He's laid back, except in the morning when he wants to be fed. So yeah, he's he'll do this till what about four, so three yeah, thirty-four, and then he knows it's time to come inside. And then he starts roaring and pacing, and so if he wants in or out, right? If you ever see him out here pacing and looking at the brown square in the back of the exhibit, that's the door that we bring him in, and so he knows that that door opens and dinner's on the other side. So that's what he's doing. Uh, Rebecca wants to know if Sumatran tigers are endangered. Yes. They're very endangered. There are probably less than 400 left in the wild. Um, they are illegally poached. Um, they are one of the, oh, you were saying this better. You yeah, explain it better. They're one of the most poached animals. Obviously, pangolins are one of the, the highest ones. But the thing about them is that people will use every single part of their body to sell on the black market. So they'll use their blood, their bones, their teeth, their whiskers, their skin. Every single part of them is either a novelty item or used in some type of me medicine in the black market. Quote unquote um, medicine. What? Right. Quote, Quote unquote, unquote, unquote medicine. medicine. Right, exactly. It's like <laughs> ancient medicine that they right. believe the tiger has a medicinal purpose. Yeah, so they are poached for that mainly because of those reasons. And that is why they're they're pretty much endangered is that, and poaching and then habitat loss. Yeah, they're they're the palm oil trade. Very valuable dead. Yeah. A lot of animals were trying to convince the people who live in their range that they're more valuable alive, but something like a tiger unfortunately yeah. is worth a ton of money yeah, when it's especially dead. Especially their coat, their skin and their fur because of their pattern. It's so unique. Um people pay a lot of money for it. Right. Uh Amy, Amy Jo, I don't, I'm assuming that's Amy Jo. She wants to know how he gets his exercise. <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely um, in ways of enriching him. Um, we put different items in his yard every day to keep him active. Scroll and over. Show his, show his bungee cord. So he's yeah. got this, uh, he really, his favorite toy uh, that we enrich him with would definitely be his kegs that he has in his yards Thank and you, inside. Local right. Um, <laughs> they're donations that we get. And this one that Eric's showing you right now is actually attached to a bungee cord. So when he plays with it, it jumps up and down. So he's really jumping and getting kind of some exercise from that way. But also it kind of stimulates some natural behaviors that he would do in the wild while hunting. So it's kind of good for him that way. But yeah, enrichment is our biggest way of exercising all of our animals at the zoo to get them active. I'm showing a couple of different enrichment items. And yeah, then we, we threw, threw some in. Yep. 
we put some meat, Rose put some meat in that paper towel tube and he's just not interested. Uh, Nikki you wants to know. I do, it's urine. Here's some red fox urine. I sprayed it all on the outside of his mesh, but he's not feeling it too much. I don't know if you guys can smell it. I can't smell it yet. Um, Nikki wants to know, is his fur soft or is it more coarse? Um, I'm trying to remember from the last time we had yeah, him down with that. We only get to touch him when he is, um, uh, when asleep he, for vets. Yeah, when he's asleep for vets. That's the only time we touch him safely. Um, other than that, all of our training is really through the mash and hands off. I believe he was I think he's pretty soft. soft. Yeah. I don't think he was coarse. He's, I would the say. The snow leopards are way softer, right, but he's right. pretty soft. I would say like a dog. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say like a house cat. Right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a pillow out of him. <laughs> yeah. Cause right. I definitely, but, when he gets wet, he dries off very fast. So that makes yeah. me think more of a coarse like dog hair. Right. Uh, Trent, who's seven, wants to know how many tigers we have. Right now here at the zoo. <laughs> oh big stretch <laughs> yeah so we're being a smaller facility we only have space for one tiger so we'll only ever have one tiger um until that new tiger building like i mentioned before is is built then we may have more than one yeah that's the goal is to be able to get enough space to breed to have a breeding pair and when you breed you have to be able to hold the mom and the dad I think it's up to eight tigers. Yeah, so you have to hold mom, dad, and then any cubs for potentially a year or two. Yeah, because they can have anywhere from one to six uh, cubs in their litter. Typically, on average, I believe it's around two to three cubs. Um, but you have to be able to house the maximum at all times. Right. And then remember, you have to separate boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Right, so I think what I looked it up, I've never worked with baby tigers. I looked it up, though. I think mom, they stay with mom for up to two years. And then we would have to separate boys and girls uh, and same sex siblings would be able to stay yeah. together. Um, but then you would potentially have three or four different groups of tigers. Yeah, a lot of musical chairs when you're shifting. So you yeah. gotta have lots of exhibits for all of these right. tigers. Are you so comfy? Yes. <laughs> He's very much a cat. <laughs> if you've got a cat at home, he's very similar. Oh yeah, he very definitely has so. a typical cat personality. Yeah, he's fun. He gets a little moody every once in a while too. He gets yeah. hangry. You do. Yeah, but the only cat that doesn't act like a cat is a cheetah. Yeah, yeah. And they're, <laughs> they're just kind of freaks, <laughs> but they're fun. So. I think we're ready to wrap up for today. Um, we'll be back on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, going down the, the row, visit the, the snow leopards. So remember three o'clock on Wednesday. Thanks for showing up. And we forgot to bring the necklace again. We we're, did. We're really bad at I'll that. I'll write a note and I'll bring it on Wednesday. Everybody who's donated today and then everybody who donates through the button on the bottom um we're gonna put your name in a drawing to win a necklace that uh, grace made and it's got some skin the some shed, shed from skin the reticulated python yeah so it's really it's a really pretty necklace and if, especially if you like snakes um, go ahead and any amount of money donate it um, and if you've um, missed the part of this video if you want to go back and catch it or any of the videos we've been making since march um, you can go to our YouTube channel, Miller, youtube.com slash Miller Park Zoo, and check it out. And don't forget the zoo's open. Yeah, we're open now. Come, come visit. And visit. Yeah, and it's National Zookeeper Week, so make sure you come out and see us. Yeah. Yeah. Bring Say your hi. mask and come see us. <laughs> Definitely bring a mask. Help protect Rojo safe. Help yes. protect Rojo safe. Help keep Rojo safe. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Bye. You're